Hi guys, this is Mike from All About a Friend. I bought the Sigma 56mm prime lens a couple of weeks ago because I really wanted a nice portrait lens. Actually, I bought two portrait lenses, the Sigma 56 and the Sigma 60, but I kept the 56 because it was faster and had less focus hunting than the 60. In all fairness, I have to add that the 60 is a tiny little bit sharper on the edges and of course costs half the price of the 56. Anyway, so I did keep the 56 and I was recently looking for a nice macro lens for the Micro Four Third system. I researched and turns out that one of the best reviewed macro lenses is the Olympus Mzuiko Digital 60mm Macro. What a name. So I had to buy and test this lens, as it could be a perfect all-in-one solution for both portraits and macro photography. So here they are in front of me, let's start with the quality of build. The Sigma and the Olympus cost roughly the same, and in my opinion there is not a ton of difference in quality. The Sigma feels very sturdy and it's quite heavy, which in direct comparison leads one to believe that it's of better build, but the Olympus doesn't feel bad either. So yeah, it's smaller and more lightweight, but it does seem sturdy as well. Let me put it this way, the Sigma looks and feels like a quality lens for a full frame camera while the Olympus feels like a quality micro for third lens. Does it make sense? That's the best comparison I came up with. So yeah, the Sigma feels a tiny little bit more professional, but it's not night and day. Having said that, the Sigma does come with a lens hood, while on the Olympus you have to buy it as an extra. So there's that. Okay, now let's come to the comparison. Basically, I will split this in three parts, in general use, portrait and macro, and I will try to give you my thoughts on each. Okay, so general use, sharpness. This is the Sigma. And now on the right side you see the Olympus. Please bear in mind that because of the different focal length, the picture isn't perfectly the same. I set both lenses to f5.6. And yeah, both lenses look incredibly sharp here. I couldn't really say which one is sharper. Let's zoom in to see some detail. This is 300% zoomed in. And here it seems to me that the Olympus might be a tiny little bit sharper, but it's really negligible. Now let's look at the corners. Again, 300% zoomed in. Here they perform equal as well. I mean, if there is a difference, not one member of the audience might ever notice it. Okay, so let's move on to the autofocus. Both lenses are set to f2.8. There is a single focus point directly in the middle. I'll admit this is not the easiest test because of the harsh light conditions. A lot of light followed by shadows followed by light again. But still you can see that the Sigma clearly performs better here. The autofocus is faster for one, plus it shows almost no focus hunting. The Olympus does exhibit a little bit of focus hunting, as you can see by the forward and backward movement of the focus. In my shootout of the Sigma 56 versus the 60, I made a focus test as well, and the Sigma 56 performed beautifully, the same as here. However, this test and the last one were both done in broad daylight. I'm mentioning that because I encountered something a couple of days ago. So, this was shot in my flat, in a darker environment that was only lit with fake lights, no sunlight. Again, a single focus point is in the middle, and the Olympus, as you can see, does what it is supposed to do. It's not the fastest autofocus that I have ever seen. And here again, it shows focus hunting. It focuses too deep and then rewinds a little bit, right? But let's compare it to the Sigma now. And what the hell is going on here? It seems to me the Sigma is simply unable to autofocus properly when the light conditions aren't perfect. It finds my hand no problem, as there is a big light box right behind the camera, but it really struggles with the microwave in the background. I actually couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that. I mean, even when you think, yeah, now the Sigma got it, it keeps on focusing and the picture gets blurry again. Sometimes it just stays blurry and refuses to do anything, like a spoiled child. <laughs> Remember that all the settings on the camera are exactly the same. And yet here, the Olympus outperforms the Sigma. That actually came quite as a shock to me. But okay, let's move on to portrait. Uh, this is my stupid face, filmed with the Sigma, and now with the Olympus. Please ignore my dry skin and focus on the bokeh maybe? Uh, <laughs> I don't know about you, but to me, this seems almost identical and just as you would expect. 
The background is a little bit closer on the Olympus, but other than that, they are pretty equal. Both seem to be very usable for portraits, with nice bokeh. Okay, I'm doing us all a favor now, not looking at my stupid sunburned face, and move on. To the most interesting part actually, the macro function. So this is Pennywise, the dancing clown. As you can see, with the Sigma I have to move back 42-43 cm from Pennywise to get a sharp picture, even when I focus manually. Okay, so this is the picture you get with the Sigma. And it looks nice, right? When you use the one-to-one -one macro function on the Olympus, the focal depth goes to f5.6. And so I set the Sigma to f5.6 as well. The maximum magnification is 1 to 74 on the Sigma, as opposed to the Olympus 1 to 1 setting. So in short, this is the closest you can move to an object with the Sigma. Try to go even closer and it gets blurry. So now let's check out the Olympus, a self-proclaimed macro lens. Are you ready? Here we go. Bam! What a difference, right? This is really on another level. I am now 5 or 6 cm away from Pennywise and you can see every little detail of the paint, every mistake they made, the structure of his skin and so on and so on. So this is really awesome, I am really ecstatic about how good this is. In all fairness I have to add, in this setting, to get the same exposure level I had to bump up the ISO from 160 to 500. But we knew from the beginning that the Olympus isn't as fast as the Sigma, right? Still. This is truly awesome. And on that high note, we have come to the last part of that video, my conclusion. In short, I really like the Sigma, I really do. It has a sharp and great image, it feels really solid, it's a little bit cheaper than the Olympus and it comes with a lens hood. But the autofocus issues that I encountered are just terrible. When the autofocus works, and it does work properly in broad sunlight, it's great. But as I showed you, it really starts to break apart as soon as light conditions aren't perfect. The Olympus on the other hand might not be so well built, it's more expensive and it comes with no lens hood. But I really feel this is a great bargain for a great all-rounder. If you can live with one less stop, for not even $500 you can have a great portrait lens and a great macro lens in one. So yeah, I can absolutely confirm the great reviews of this thing. And I might add, it works just as good for video as it does for photography. And with that, I end this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more video related stuff and see you next time. Bye.